Madam Speaker, this is a time when our nation is weathering some very formidable challenges. Challenges that some would use to draw out our differences, mainly to challenge that most fundamental Canadian value, the one where we care about and act in the common good. Well, Canada is too valuable in the world to have this value damaged, so I'm here today with an opportunity, one that reflects, in a small way, the solemn obligation we have in this place, indeed one that we must accept as our imperative to promote and achieve unity through respect, understanding and dialogue. It may be a small offering toward that goal, but Bill S-214, the call to designate every February 21st as Mother Languages Day across Canada, is intended to raise our awareness of the value of honoring and protecting the cultural and social riches, richness of the, the languages many of us brought to Canada. Or, and this is very important, the languages that have been spoken in our land since time immemorial. Now, an important point. This bill does not propose the creation of a statutory holiday. It simply opens up opportunities for people in every community to celebrate the unique aspect of their culture and history. That unique aspect that comes with the language that they brought to Canada with them, and maybe still speak at home with their children to keep that heritage alive. It's a unique honor to sponsor S214 in this house to hopefully make real the dream of people in our British Columbia community to create a moment for all Canadians to reflect on yet another way on an essential aspect of our nation that makes it the place where so many in the world want to live. It's a fact of this country. We are stronger because of our differences, not in spite of them. I can relate personally on this point because Back home in Fleetwood, Port Kells, in Surrey, we enjoy an incredibly diverse community. 30.3% of us in Fleetwood, Port Kells, are of European heritage. 30.1% of us are from South Asia. Now, this statistic is maybe a year old, and I have a, a very strong feeling that that ratio has now reversed, and that our South Asian community is indeed the largest in our riding. But we have a healthy range of cultures and languages in those two large groups. But we have to add, Chinese, 13%, Filipino, almost 10%. And there's Korean and Japanese and Croatian and Latin American and African and measurable populations of many, many other cultures. And we also absolutely must shine a light on the thousands among us in our riding and in Surrey and indeed right across Canada with Aboriginal heritage in urgent need to help keep their ancient languages alive. This diversity is highlighted in many ways. It's highlighted in the arts, in the way we worship, the sports we play, the ceremonies that we celebrate, and the cultural events that we hold in our community for ourselves and for our neighbors. And, I might add, a personal favorite, food. I'm delighted to hear that we're going to be celebrating Filipino food just in time for Mike going back home to Fleetwood Port Kells. And I, I can tell the uh, Filipino restaurant in our riding that uh, my staff and I will be there to celebrate the food and to enjoy their hospitality. Then there's the languages, each with the symbolism and the idioms that reflect the heartfelt values and character of each community within our community. Long ago, in, in work to communicate public services and policies, which included invitations to participate in the development and their delivery, I grew to appreciate the power of relating to people with the words that carried the meaning and context that delivered the necessary message in a way that promoted the understanding that they needed to have and the engagement that they had an opportunity to provide. Now, doing this is not just a simple matter of translation. You don't just have a word in a language and find the English word that you know, tries to mean the same thing because there's more to words than just the bare fundamental meaning. Because we need instead to transcreate, to adapt thoughts in one language to something that delivers the clear intent of the communication. 
Our excellent uh, parliamentary translation services staff are well experienced with this. Now, the opportunity to celebrate our mother language opens the way to share the words and the phrases of one language that may have no equivalent in another. And in doing so, we learn something about our neighbors in this country of ours. Here's some examples. In Brazilian Portuguese, we have the word saudades. No single English word can do justice to the emotion that it communicates, emotions of longing and nostalgia. In Brazil, they have that beija flora, the kisser of flowers, a name that creates such a beautiful image of a creature that we call the, hum the hummingbird. In Chinese, the expression meng dai captures a similarly beautiful sentiment that the English equivalent, dream to be a butterfly, offers only a glimpse of a much broader picture than one might imagine when that word comes up in conversation. Thousands of people in Fleetwood Port Kell speak Punjabi, and they have a short, very precise expression, rala, which I'm told means a really messed up situation. So I'll be listening for that one. My Punjabi is very rusty, as you'll find in just, just a second, because there's another Punjabi saying, it's uh, Suno Sabdi Karo Apriya, uh, which offers the wisdom to take advice from everyone, but do what you think is best. To be called a, a bayan in our Filipino community is high praise. That one word describes a hero, but not just any hero, a patriot who uses their bravery, courage, and kindness to further the human race or the cause of the community. And of course, we have our indigenous languages. Coincidentally, this is Indigenous Language Day in Canada, an important reminder of the work we must do to present, present, protect, and preserve the languages that may well be extinct without our intervention. Our government has made that a priority with allocations in the 2019 budget of 334 million over five years. And there was more in the 2021 budget to fund these efforts. In BC alone, funding through the Indigenous Languages Act provided the First People's Cultural Council additional funding of $6.86 million last November to increase investments through grants for projects that hadn't been previously funded or that needed additional funding to complete their work. This one measure is covering immersion strategies, language planning, resource development, and more to support the revitalization of 34 First Nations languages that we have in BC. It brought total federal support for the First Peoples Cultural Council to $14.6 million, an investment in preserving our history, to be sure, but also to enrich and strengthen our Indigenous culture today, which can be shared right across our diverse community. That sharing, by the way, sets up some amazing events. I'll never forget a huge gathering of our Sikh community a few years ago in Bear Creek Park. I was up on the stage looking over a sea of turbans of every color. And there they were, enjoying the Red River Reel as performed by a Métis band, only in Canada. So, Madam Speaker, Bill S-214 represents a, a unique and truly timely opportunity. Establishing every February 24, 1st as Canada's annual opportunity to observe and celebrate Mother Languages Day, something our, our culturally diverse communities can, as they see fit, use to bring their neighbourhoods closer together in the spirit of what it truly means to be Canadian, as a way to remind us and to remind so many thousands of us why it was they worked so hard to be here with us. Speaking of events, I should add that as part of this government's pandemic supports, $200 million was dedicated to fund festivals and cultural events because of the fundamental value that they added to the community over and above the enjoyment of each other's cultures. In closing, I must recognize three of the many people who have worked so hard for years to see this day created. This includes the vision and energy of Mohammed Aminul Islam, who's held Mother's Languages Day uh, events in Surrey for a number of years, at least before the pandemic, and discovered the equity that this celebration that he sponsored, the equity that it built between communities when they gathered in the spirit of sharing, 
discovery and enjoyment. BC Senator Mobina Jaffer tried more than a few times to get this bill through the Senate. She was successful there, but getting it through the House of Commons was a bit more of a challenge. The machinations of government held it back more than a couple of times. But her persistence and the passion for the idea of creating this day were the catalyst for the steps being taken once again in the other place that we have here before us this evening. And finally, I absolutely must thank my friend and colleague and seconder, the Honourable Member of Parliament for Cloverdale Langley City, who took up this cause in our 42nd Parliament and who is generously ready, willing and able to second Bill S-214 on this occasion. These people and so many others have seen the importance of promoting, protecting and preserving the languages that flavour our cultural diversity. Appropriately, on this Indigenous Language Day in Canada, there's one word from our Coast Salish peoples that perfectly fits their efforts and our opportunity with Bill S-214. It's uh, the word, and I'm going to try and get this one uh, correctly, Setsuwatl, one word that takes five in the English language to convey. It means working together for the common interest. Mother Languages Day is an observance that can really take root in any and every community across our nation. And I call on my colleagues here tonight to help make its success a reality now and to help Canadians be ready to celebrate it on February 21st, 2023. My thanks and gratitude for this opportunity.